uh, it's been uh, a lot of what's happening in the last few weeks to find the moment. Yeah, and, uh, we had to deal with the new uh, COVID reality, but we finally uh, found the moment. So we're very happy about this. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's that's the reality we are living now. But we need to need to do always the the right thing, and the right thing is to find some time to 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 call and to to discuss the ideas and i hope and i'm look, looking forward really to have this conversation with you me too me too so let's start straight away uh i already briefed you on this one you had 20 seconds to think <laughs> but um uh in your office you know you're in your home office but maybe at the club or wherever you work but yeah what is the most important item or aspect that you have in your office or in your coach's room yeah, it, it, it is a very deep question, but uh, in resume, I like to have and I like to, to focus always on my on my principles as a coach uh, in terms of technical technical principles, uh, principles that are the base of my game model idea, my, my football idea, my philosophy. They are very important because I, I believe and I'm totally convinced that this principles all the principles I, I i like to to develop and i like to to be focused it will be um the base of my identity as a coach okay. in terms of technically approach of the game so i think that's very important not only for me but or as well for the people who works with me around me and they need to understand what are our principles to 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 play to, to train and those principles will be uh, the main base of of our identity. Everything you do. Yeah. yeah. Well, how many principles do you have? Is there Ooh. a set, set amount? Yeah, there, there's there is a lot because uh, yeah. It, it, first, we we divide the game in moments. Yeah. And for those moments, uh, all of those moments, <clears throat> we have principles associated. So there are a lot of principles. But um, I think the key ones we, we know very well, and there are not so many because we need to understand that we can have a million principles, but if we cannot uh, communicate well to the players, they will not understand and they will, yeah. they will see that there are a lot of complexity around that and could be not uh, appropriated to, to coach the players. So we need to be very objective. We need to be uh, very convinced about our core principles the way, of the way we want to play to, to to transmit well to the players and to communicate well to the players for them to understand because they need to understand to to apply yeah can you can you name a few of those principles or that stand out maybe in your vision or what are the most important yeah. in, your, in your opinion yeah principles like uh, we 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 have macro principles and we we can talk about uh, the my philosophy in terms of coaching I, I think uh, you 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 already understood for by by the the, the previous talks we had that I'm very convinced um, about the tactical utilization method. Yeah. So we divide we divide principles first in macro principles that are the the major micro, principles. Micro, macro, macro, right? Macro, yes, macro. Yeah, yeah. There, there are the major principles, um, and then for a, for every macro principle. We have principles associated, like the first macro principle. I can tell you, like pressing, we like to press, always yeah. press. So that, that that's a macro principle, and principles associated for pressing. Uh, we have, of course, the the details, the timing, the, the timing they ne need to do, the intensity they need to do, the the way they need to, to do. So we have all the details around those principles. But an example, if you want to press. Uh, you need to you need to understand how you want to press. It's it's man marking or ball orientated. So, in in our opinion, ball orientated it's it's the most important uh, yeah. way to to press. So it's it, it's like that. First, we have macro principles for every moment, and then we we have for any for every macro principles principles associated to to give recognition to our identity. Is it the sub principles sub sub principles? Is that the same or is it? <laughs> Yeah, look, if you if, if you try to 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 find research about these tactical periodization concepts, you will find a lot of things and you will yeah. 
you, you will see that that there are a lot of complexity and sometimes for coaches uh, this is not good so much complexity i believe and because it's my example as a coach yeah i i built my own uh, methodology i built my own methodology of course i had some references but i built my own methodology and i believe that uh, i had time to build it yeah. because i started so early i started at the, the age of 20 years old and uh, i had the opportunity and i'm a privileged coach because i had time to build my methodology to make some mistakes to correct those mistakes to have some influence around uh, a lot of references and now i'm convinced about my method of course it's always changing because we need to 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 see the trends and we need to to update uh, always our methodology and our philosophy but i'm very convinced about the way i, I coach and the way i train about my methodology so i believe that uh, you have to build it but my reference of course it's static organization but before i i start to 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 listen about tactical optimization when I started, I already did it. And for okay. me, tactical optimization in resume means that you have an idea, you have a game model idea, and you will train to achieve that idea. So you will not train to develop things that they are not connected to your idea. Uh -huh. When I started, even when, with the younger ages, I, I always had this in mind. But when you talk about sub principles, sub principles, sub principles, a lot of details. Could be a little bit tricky for coaches uh, we need to to to, to, be, to keep simple keep it simple because we cannot forget our main goal as a, as a coach we need to have our ideas but we need to communicate well to the players because the players will need to apply it in the in the pitch on the pitch so if you have a lot of complexity around this uh sub principle and sub principle sub principles probably you will not have the capacity to transmit well to your players, sure. even in, in, in sessions. Yeah, so you, you, it's a pitfall to go into too much details. You should first start with the big idea of football. Is that what you're saying? Yes. First, we need to have our identity. Our, I think the way we want to play, like, okay, we want to play in How session. did it start with you? Because you, you started as a coach 20 years old. Of course, you have yeah. an idea of what football is, but yeah. how how did you know that this is the way i wanted to play or this is the way my teams should play yeah that's a very good question because look when i started um uh, i was a, a a player i was uh, a former player not a professional player i was amateur level but when i started i all when i played i always like to play for attack to attack and to to have control on the game because that's myself that's me as a person and i think the first the first question you should um, do to yourself when you try to create your idea it's how do you see life uh, how the way you see your life the way you approach your life like if you are afraid from things and you want to defend or if you are courageous and if you want to attack and if you want to like like that i think that that's the first question uh, your personality your your character and your experiences uh, your exper lifetime experiences it will very important it will be very important to to understand about your game philosophy and th th that's me i want i like to attack uh, i'm courageous i don't i'm not afraid to to concede goals or to concede yeah, yeah. any uh, counter attacks because i, I I want to attack again. I want to control again, and I need to control the game. That's that's me. I, 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 I'm very meticulous. Uh, I like details. I like to be in control every time in my life. So is this, did, this is something that you feel that when you're 20 years old, you start coaching. This is what I want, or is it something that you discover? I, how, how I don't, I'm, it's interesting because it's connected to everything that you do. It's it's literally walking up to a girl or waiting to walk a, the, waiting to that the girl comes to you whatever in every situation in life this is something that's there um, but you, you transfer it to football of course or maybe it's business opportunities or it's maybe it's applying for a job as a coach are you going to wait or going to going to attack but you knew already when i'm 20 i want to be an attacking person or i am a proactive person maybe that's the right word 
So my football is also proactive. Yeah, I think that's it. It, it, it is a mixed uh, mixed thing. So you you, I think me uh, my, and my 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 story my 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 experience was okay. Um, I knew myself at the age of 20, but I need to discover myself as well. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm a proactive guy. Uh, I always, uh, I always, I always was. And look, uh, in, in terms of girls, the same. Uh, <laughs> I, I, in terms of uh, everything around my life, it was the same. I, I'm, I'm a proactive guy, and I don't like to so, wait. So so sorry, Verandra, but Fernando Valente, who you also know, yeah, uh, he yeah. said this is maybe it was connected to the type of player you are, and he <laughs> pushed my buttons because he said, "Yeah, I think you are a defender uh, because you are more of a controlling coach." Uh, I was an attacker, so I'm more the adventurous coach. So is it also connected to the spot, or the, the 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 position on the pitch that you had? <laughs> yeah, look, I was a midfielder. I was a, I was a midfielder, and I I, I think the midfielder <clears throat> sorry I think the midfielder need to be in control. He controls the rhythm, he controls the pace of the game, uh, and I, me as a coach the same. I see the game as a midfielder. I like to control the game. I like to be in control. As a defender, you will not be in control. You are always watching. I hope we are always watching because we just watch from the back. Because the ball is uh, around the, the opposition goal, but as an attacker, sometimes when you defend, you feel that the responsibility is not yours, because they need to defend, and the goalkeeper need to to defend balls, and the defenders need to 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 cut balls, and the midfielders need to help. But I'm I'm an attacker, of course, I need to help, and I need to be involved in the defensive organization. But it's not my responsibility uh, yeah. to not concede goals. But as a midfielder, you have everything you need to build you need to create and you need to score uh, but defending you need to press you need to be close to your teammates you need to defend you need to, so you have a lot of responsibilities on the game everyone has but as a midfielder you are connected with everything you are in the middle you are in the core of the game so uh, i was a midfielder i'm a typical midfielder i played as a midfielder, since I knew myself, uh, even when I played on the streets, because I grew up in the, in the street with my friends, and I always liked to be in the center, not defending, not attacking, uh -huh. scoring goals. I was in the middle to have the ball. So I, 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 I'm totally uh, convinced that this kind of personality, this kind of characteristics of my personality influenced a lot in my philosophy as a, as a coach. I am, I completely agree, and I because of the talks with guys like you, it's very clear to me that I was a defender and that I was like <laughs> control the game. I don't know, if it's positive, but it's so true. It's a little bit confronting as well, but um, it's interesting that it also a little bit different. I don't know. I'm interested if, if you're listening at this point, you think, "Hey, I was an attacker. My style is like this." I, I'm pretty sure it's almost ninety percent related. No, I, I don't know, but it's only my vision. And of course, there are a lot of good look. Um, you have coaches, uh, attacking coaches. Uh, they they were good defenders. So yeah, I think, I think it could be could be could influence yourself, but could not. In my in my in my experience and my example, influenced a lot. I, I knew that uh, I I need I need to have I need to be in control. I, I will I will not allow. And I will not feel happy if my team always defend uh, 60 or 70 percent, always defend in a low block and wait for the opponent to, to make mistakes and for me to counterattack. So I will not accept that my team will be, will do that uh, for 60 minutes or 70 minutes or 70 no. percent of the game. I will not be happy if my team plays like that. I will be happy if, if, the, if it will be the opponent opposite if i yeah. no, i completely agree yeah. that's the same in my let's say uh, philosophy or or game model as well but i was more focused on controlling and uh, balancing defense with attacking so i had more attention for maybe the defensive aspect and then i gave the attackers more freedom instead of spending my attention <clears throat> to 
uh, to involve or influence the attacking positions or whatever. I just le left that more to the players itself, to, to the creativity of the players. And then I would focus my attention to, okay, are we balanced? What if we lose the ball? Are we in control already? So that was, it's, well, again, it's so interesting to connect this with your own style. So. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting, Aaron. And look, uh, it, it is a mix because I discovered myself when I started, I just want to attack. I just want to attack. And uh, my main focus when I was planning, um, the way we want to train and the way we want to play, it was, it was always attacking, uh, building, uh, finishing combinations, a uh, lot of things connected with attacking. The mo major, the major subject was always attacking. So, but when I grew up, and when I started to to be in uh, different ages, working with different ages, uh, and more close to the professional level, I, I I had the need to to understand how we need to defend, but not defend in a low block. How we need to be balanced. How we need to uh, keep uh, balanced. For when we lose the ball, we need to defend. Uh, how we create uh, how, how we organize our line when, when they are so so in, higher on the pitch yeah. we need to understand the connection and the synchronization between these and it was one of one of my main focus when i grew up as a coach when, and i discovered myself we need to defend well because my focus only was when attacking of course influenced as well because i i started um in a club like benfica uh, Benfica is a big club yeah. in Portugal, as you know, and we are always attacking because uh, we have the best players on, on, on the country. Of course, with, with Sporting Lisbon and Porto, uh, the same. But you were we always dominant the... in 90% uh, of the games, you were dominant. Yeah, we are always dominant. Even when we play against Sporting Lisbon, it, our, at, at the time, our big rival um, that there are a lot of similar uh, we are very similar in yeah. terms of quality uh, quality individual quality and quality quality but my main focus always was one we need to dominate we need to attack even when we play with sporting but when when i achieve a different level uh, we, i need I, I felt the the need to 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 invest more in the, in the, the defending did it, did it grow with older ages so you realized okay in maybe young because you, at Benfica you coached almost every age uh, yeah. uh, from you you 11s to the first team um and the, the during your well 18 years there so you, and you moved up and then you moved down in age again i saw was it that in the younger age it was more attacking minded and in the older ages there's more responsibility in the defending moments that that, that transferred or what did you also found to focus more on the defensive part or switch your attention as well to that part of football also in the younger age what what was the moment that you realized okay i, I need to focus on this as well yeah it's it's funny it's it's very funny because look um, and here we, we we will talk we will put a little bit of um the the way we want to to work together with your staff because when I grew up and, and when I move up to, to, to a different age group, uh, the game was a little bit more ba balanced. So we need, we need to defend well because, of course, we can dominate the most part of the time. But uh, when we are defending, we need to understand how we need to defend well to avoid the opponents to achieve our goal. So I, I was... Uh, I was aware of the of that when I achieve I think the under 19 level yeah. because when I when I achieved the under 19 level uh, the importance uh, that here in Portugal people give to under 19 it's very it's very high because yeah. uh, people like uh, the fans and the supporters they like to to be at the academy every weekend okay yeah to see players and to see the the future players of the club and they yeah. we, and the media they 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 have a lot of uh, focused on, on on those kind of players so i think the 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 all of us will be the lights was was on, on our our team because we achieved uh, in 2014 the the UEFA youth league final yeah. 
yeah. uh, against all the all the odds because uh, look uh, we were Benfica and we we are competing with Manchester City, Manchester United, uh, Real Madrid, Barcelona, yeah, the the giants of of European football, yeah. and of course Benfica it's a big club as well, yeah. but in terms of uh, in terms of uh, I think resources we were a little bit different from those clubs and we achieved the final so the lights was more on us and when the lights were more on us i myself and i can tell you and no without no problem i, I think okay we're, uh, we need to win uh, or, i like i'm a, i like to win and i like always to win and I, i'm not um, I, I i don't deal in, i don't deal well with the with the defeat but okay. I, because I like to win every every time since I was a kid, so and I I, I felt that okay we need to win more than more than ever and uh, to win sometimes the, the the impact on you is okay let's defend well better to not concede goals and and let's attack uh, as well but let, let and you have an uh, afraid reaction so you became more conservative. I became I became I had um, I, I had that feeling that I need to be more conservative. But uh, only I, for I'm, that game or in that season? No, in, no, no, in that game, not in that game, but in that season. In my approach, in my yeah, approach, okay. oh, yeah. in my approach, and uh, I'm very uh, very fortunate guy because I have uh, a very good assistants uh, working with me. And when I think in the right moment, one of them is my brother. Is my brother one of my sins? Is that's my cool. brother? Yeah, that's very good. That's great, man. Just just to go to that to work with your brother every day. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool, and it's very important for me because we have a very good relationship. One hundred percent trust, I can imagine. Yeah, trust one hundred percent, of course, and that's very important. That's key. And it, he, he, he called your brother on as well. <laughs> different time. Yeah. Okay, sorry, well, sorry, sorry, I'm interrupting your story. No, no, it will be, it will be better. It will be, I think it will be a rich, it, it, more rich conversation because yeah. it's, it's very, he's a, a top class coach. And he, he, he told me, look, he called me and look, uh, João, we, I think, wait, let's, okay, we understand the, the responsibility, but um, let's, let's, let's go back. In, the, in days and uh, you are a more attacking approach forget about defensive and don't, don't be so conservative uh, let, let, let's attack and we will find a way we will find a way to defend well when we are attacking higher and we are dominating the game even when we play against Barcelona against Real Madrid let's let's go let's focus because this kind of and I felt myself this kind of approach will have a major impact on players because if you are a conservative coach, your players will see that as a, a sign of, yeah. an indicator, and you, you are not courageous. But when you have an attacking approach, and when you feel that, okay, let's attack even when we play against Real Madrid. And, and it was, I think it was the right click on me uh, at that time, because I was all, always attacking, dominating, dominating. In a, in, in a moment, I felt, okay, the responsibility um, it, it it had an impact on me in a, in, in in a moment that I, I needed to be a little bit more conservative, but finally I I was very happy Th that moment it, it was very short, and I I, I had that click again uh, with with the help of my assistant and my the, the people around me, and of course my 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 reflection on on the process and I became again always uh, an attacking coach and dominating, but focused because I think th this is a learning process. And uh, that's why I, I told you uh, minutes ago that uh, I, 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 I'm a privileged coach because I learned to be a coach and I built my philosophy yeah. and I built my, my own approaching of, on, on football. And I'm, I'm, I'm a very fortunate coach because during these 21 years as a coach, I, I I felt that I grew a lot, and I'm convinced about my method. And my method, of course, it's not conservative. My approach is not conservative. It's in a dominating 
and it was it, it was the moment responding to your question it was a moment and like i told you and we will have a different topic because uh, we are talking about um working as a group working with your assistants working as, with your staff and the, the way my my brother my my assistant coach approached me to make me understand that we need to be different again uh, it was very important it was yeah. decisive it's also a signal can from your brother to you but then if you apply it to your team okay, got, everybody knows i think there's some tension and there's it's an exciting game you're not going to do this every year uh, and then they see the coach they see the coach doubting 100 sure it's not there's nothing wrong with that but if they also see the coach making the step towards the courageous choice again is going to do something with the players as well because okay if the coach can do it then i'm i can do it as well uh and I, so I think it, it's a human connect you don't have to hide that you're as a coach as well that but if you then go from 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 the from maybe from doubt and set yourself up to con confidence again and we're gonna go, go back to our own style it's a signal uh, i love that yeah it, it was it was look uh, and then uh, I, i have no I have, i have any problems to 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 tell you that because it was very important i think that, that that's i think well, like you said these kind of moments will will be decisive on your on your process as a coach and yeah. it was a it was a, the, the right the right moment and i i i think i did the, the right thing yeah we, when my first year in uh as a head coach the first game of the league it was 2-2 we were the promoted team and um it was five no 10 minutes to play and uh, i felt the crowd uh my coaching staff was okay this is good this is our first game in the league we have a point we're not going to lose and um i decided to switch uh, to sub off a defender and put on an extra midfielder later on put on an extra attacker so all the risk all risk we were completely open and i think okay, this is can go very good or this can go very bad but i don't care <laughs> i want to go for the attacking version in the end we won it 92nd minute three two and uh it also gave a signal f to the team for the rest of the season so it doesn't matter what the situation is we can always gear up in the last 10 15 minutes And that year we won so many games in the last 10 minutes because everybody knew, okay, we have a, I'm, this is not the story about me, but it's an example that I recognize in this story. We can, we are a team that can, it doesn't matter what we can gear up. We can put the pressure on even in the last minute. And in the end, it's also had a downside because I know there was, we were second of the league almost the whole year as still as a promoted team. So we we thought we were pretty good but, but the players started thinking that as well so i know we had a game against the team that was like second or third from the bottom we came up one zero two zero and then within 15 minutes they came to three two uh, three two for them and and there was no panic in our team never but till 10 minutes before the end there was still no panic and everybody was relaxed and, way too relaxed because <laughs> yeah it's not going to succeed every time uh in the end we succeeded again and it but it was then i started to realize okay we are now trusting too much on this uh, but it does something with the players that's maybe how i wanted to start if you show <clears throat> that you are willing to do it the players will follow and it even though it goes wrong they still feel Yeah, that there's something there, and uh, yeah, that's that's a brilliant that, that's a brilliant story, Aaron. Because I think that that, that I think that that's the, the that's the key, because like like you like, like you said, uh, if you if you believe if you believe it's the right indicator for players to believe as well, and yeah. the that that's a brilliant story. I, I I fully agree with you because if you give the signal to players that you will gear up on the last minutes. Uh, they, they will they will look at you and okay he wants to, he wants to win he wants to attack and this kind of feeling 
will be, I think, in in, in my perspective, it will be crucial for your team to to every game and every moment of the game they believe that they can. And I I, I don't believe in in luck when you score a goal uh, or on the last minute. Uh, on the last minutes, sometimes you are. Uh, you are the game is draw and you score in the last minute because your team gear up to, to, to a different to a different level and this is not luck. No. This is the way you it's you mindset and they know the they know at one point okay we can be better in that last ten minutes than the opponent. The yeah. opponent is getting tired but we are getting stronger. If you believe that you see them winning one v ones and yeah it's yeah. A that you can literally install in your team. And th 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 that's about leadership. I think leadership, the mindset, and the, the the way you you create a mindset for the group. I think that that's that's leadership, and uh, the way you lead your group, it's 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 very very crucial. I I, I think that some teams, um, and now I'm, I watch a lot of games around the world. Yeah. Uh, I have time to watch around, and, and what, one of the things I recognize on in teams that in in, in the last 20, 30 minutes, to ten minutes. Uh, the team believes that they can win, even when, the, even if they don't score, but they believe. And I think that's that's the um, the mirror of the way the coach lead lead the group. So I I'm I'm I'm, I'm I recognize myself in your story because I like to, to to be courageous and I like to have this kind of signals to to I like to make them understand that. We we can win every time. Yeah. If you, if you are if you have a draw in five minutes in the last five minutes, and if you're happy with that, uh, you will you will put your team in in a position that okay we are happy with the draw. So it is not I believe it's not it's not the right approach. Even when if you play with a very good team away game, but if you give signals, you can win and you want to win. And sometimes you you. You you sub a player like a midfielder and you put a forward or you you, you take you make some offensive substitution uh, you, you you take out uh, a forward and you put another forward I think that kind of signals it's very important and I think it's crucial for the players to understand that that's your approach in, in football yeah yeah uh, well I would love to see a game of you and see how you would implement those moments yeah. are you how how is your style then on the sideline, are you relaxed or are you fierce with your team? Are you, <laughs> are you almost Conte style running up and down? What's your style in those, in those moments? But not maybe in general. What is your style? Nah, my style is, um, I, I think I, I became a little bit more, um, controlled. Yeah. I'm a very active coach. And even when I, I, it's my complete assumption, but I think you have a loud voice. So if you are there, people will know <laughs> that you are there. Yes, you, you. I think you are completely right. Uh, I'm, I have a loud voice, and I like to be, like I said, I like to be in control, and, and I like to, to be active, and I like to be proactive, even in sessions. If, if you if you watch a session of mine, uh, sometimes I, I'm a little bit crazy. I, I, I assume that because I, I like to be involved, and I like to, to to be very close to the players, and I like to to put energy. Yeah. Uh, and because it's me, I'm a very energetic guy, and I like to be always involved and to create energy on on the sessions uh, as well on the game. But I became a little bit more controlled uh, coach in the sideline because uh, sometimes the impact, and I recognize myself on that, and I made some mistakes because your behavior on on the sideline um, in, have a big impact on on, on your team yeah. because. Uh, if if I remember myself when I when I played, uh, sometimes in, in in hard moments of the game, you look at at your coach and you will see how he's behaving. And if you behave uh, real uh, controlled and confident, and your body language uh, shows that you are okay and you are you are not afraid, uh, probably you will feel a little bit more controlled as well yeah. as a player. Yeah. But if you see your coach uh, doing some crazy stuff, yeah, 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 frustrating, and put your hands on your head and raise your arms and always shouting, I think that's the 
body language you you don't want to see in your coach you want to see controlled coach so i think that's important but in the other way in the other hand i think you you need sometimes you need to 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 be active as well on, on the sideline you cannot be uh, seated uh, and be active it's try to uh, focus your players on on the right thing and sometimes it, you need to be uh, you need to have uh, energetic uh, body language because they are sleeping and you need to push them higher let's go let's go let's go to push for them but sometimes or the most part of the times you need to keep them focused on the task so to keep them focused on the task you need to be very controlled and you need to 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 give them some guidelines for them to play and to not always like playstation uh, you need you don't you don't, you don't you will not control your players but give them uh, signals and indicators for them to uh, to play yeah i agree yeah it, and maybe it also depends a little bit on the age because Aaron, sure. Aaron, can, can you give me two minutes yeah sure, sure two minutes can we stop yeah, two minutes sure, sorry sure. sorry two minutes two just minutes. go ahead we'll cut this out Sorry, Aaron. No problem. No problem. Sorry, Aaron. No problem. No problem at all. It was. I'm. I'm. I'm alone, and I need to. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So Sorry. we're gonna get, just gonna cut out this. I thought yeah. I was hoping, and maybe it was your agent that he's gonna call for a club. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, if 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 it was my agent, I I will I will make him wait because. Uh, <laughs> I think that that's more important now talking with you, but it was one of the tasks of my wife, and you know my wife it's much more important than my uh, yeah. they will, they will give my, <laughs> my wife is in the office uh well, I have this small studio, but my wife is here as well, so if yeah. she would come in, I would stop this <laughs> <laughs> yeah me same sorry <laughs> no but problem no go. problem, but um yeah, we're gonna just cut out this part it doesn't matter um yeah, we're we're talking about the styles, uh, and I, I was thinking. So you have the way you put your energy towards the team. If I look at your history, let's say from the first team to the U11s, and there's I, what I was thinking is there's also perhaps a different approach when it comes to the ages because if you go with you U11s, you maybe want them to fail at that point. So you leave your energy a little bit out because you want to experience, give them the experience. Okay, what does what happens if you 
don't fight or whatever. Then if you go to U15s, maybe it's in the middle. If you go to the U19s, you also want to show them and the importance of how it is to win. You have to learn them how to win. So then you have to set the example. Okay, this is what we do to win the game. We need to control. We need to make the space very close. We have to be smart, maybe make a smart foul or whatever. So show them what it is to win a game. So my question there was, okay, how does it differ if in, in, in the age group that is in front of you? Yeah, that's that's a very deep question. So I, I think that first, uh, when, when you when you coach the the younger ages like and and the, the eleven, they you, you need to have in mind that they don't have enough experiences to make uh, the best decisions. So you need to you need to help them to to, to make the best decisions always on the game. So I I believe that. The right way to do that is uh, is the is how you will train, how you will explain them to do it. To do it, I think I think that's the the most important thing uh, to help them to make best better decisions. Uh, of course, in the touchline, uh, if if you if you are a coach and your behavior as a, as a coach, I believe that you cannot shout with them and you cannot energize them every time because uh the um, the communication you are doing to them is to uh is to be focused on the energy more than on the task yeah. uh, I'm, I'm i'm not i don't agree with that i i prefer and i was always like that um and i prefer when i go out to watch my 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 nephew playing because he's playing and when i when i see under 11 or under 12 games uh, I like to see the way the coach behave and and the way I advise coaches because I have this this task as well as a coach here in Portugal. The way I advise coaches in, in those ages is to be focused on tasks, okay. not on energy because it's very important to be focused on tasks but the, the main the main way you or the main tool you have to help those players to, to these young 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 boys to make better decisions is the way you train and your methodology, uh, the way you create your methodology. I think that's that's key. Of course, in, in, in the 19 level, the same. But as, as you talk, I fully agree with you. You need you need to make them understand uh, the, the way they need to win because they are very close to the professional level. And when when became when you became professional, uh, yeah, the talk is you you need to win. You need to perform. You need to be prepared to perform and to win for win, and, and that's a different kind of approach when you play. But I, I, I will give an example. Uh, sometimes uh, in under nineteen, uh, as well in under eleven, sometimes we forget that we are playing a game. This is a game. Yep. You are not. You are, you are not uh, help them to make better decisions for for losing. Or for not being succeed, you are trying to help them to make decisions, to be succeed, to be a better player, to be to have better performances. I think the approach is is the same because the game is a game. You are trying to teach them to play a game. It's not to 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 have good actions with the ball and to receive well. You 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 want to receive well. To play forward, and you want to shoot to score a goal. You want to pass to be succeed. So, I think that the approach is the same, but the way you approach them it's a little bit different. When yeah. you talk about under eleven, focused mainly on tasks more than energy, task, 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 and make better decisions. And when you when you coach under nineteen, it's a little bit different because you are very close to professional level, and you yeah. need to energize them. And sometimes you need to say, "Hey, look." Uh, I know that you can cross uh, well, you can cross very well, but in this situation, shoot, uh, because you will score. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing I will not say for a, 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 a kid of... With oh, it's a little bit so, more result-oriented when you go towards the older. That's age. it. Uh, okay, and then how... So, and then... Um, 
you had a couple of years as a head coach, also an assistant coach at, at, at the first team level, I almost uh, have to say European elite level. How was the guidance there? Because is there some similarities with your U11s or is there a big difference or what are what are the similarities or what are the differences? Yeah, that, yeah that, 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 that's funny because when, when, I, when I went to Monaco, um, uh, I, I, the first question I did myself was when I received the, the invitation of Thierry, I, the first question I, I, I did to myself was, um, am for I prepared? Don't know, uh, you worked with Thierry Henry for nine months at Monaco. Yes. Uh, when he went there for his, uh, his coaching job, he took you as an assistant. Yes, yes, that's it. And I was the, um, before that, I was the under 23 uh, head coach of Benfica. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that, and then uh, Thierry went to, um, to Monaco. And yeah, I, I, I was a privileged coach to be invited by him yeah. uh, to work with Monaco. First because of him, and then, of course, because Monaco as well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when, when, I, when I got that invitation, the first question I did to myself, was am i prepared for this uh, am, am, am i doing the right step and it was straight away i said yes of course i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm ready and i want to apply all of my knowledge all of the things i learned from the the 19 19 years of coaching i want to to be in this level again because i was i was it in 2000 uh, 2008 I bought, not, uh, yeah, 2008, when I was 20, uh, 28 years old, I had an experience in first team of Benfica. Yeah. And they put me through and they, they make me assistant coach of the first team. Yeah. It was really, unbelievable. really unbelievable, really crazy experience. That age is, is, a, is a huge experience. Yeah, huge experience. And w when I finished yeah. that experience, I, I said, and my feeling was, if, frustrating because I moved down again I yeah. went to the, the 90s again but uh, I, in the in the first reaction was yes uh, I'm very frustrated to not go to not go going again with the, the first team because new coach came came took her own staff probably and bring it yeah old staff uh, but I was a little bit frustrated the first reaction but the second reaction with a little bit more time and reflection was okay i need i need i need to do a little bit more steps to be there and to to be succeed and i i don't want to be only an assistant coach of the first team i want to be the head coach of the first yeah. team who, yeah in the, in the upcoming years but i need to be prepared and i need to have much more experiences to be prepared for that level so let's let's work again let's do it again Let's work hard. And when I went to Monaco, the, the feeling was, yeah, I'm completely ready to do that. Uh, I want to help my, my friend, my, my big friend, Thierry. Um, I need to understand if I'm ready to, to help him. And I was it because you, you have a lot of similar things when you coach all the age groups. Uh, first, uh, players recognize in you if you are ready to make impact on them in terms of knowledge. They need to to feel that you understand the game, you understand methodology, and you know about football. And I think the best way to know about football, of course, if you are a former player, it, it helps a lot because you know the business. But uh, as a coach, uh, I think you need to have a lot of ex or you need to have if you are not a former player. It, it, this is a different discussion, but as a coach you need to have a lot of experience during your process to be prepared for all the questions they will make to you yeah. because it could be simple if a player came to you and said what, what, what i need to do in this situation and if you are not ready and prepared to to answer and to make impact on him and to to say to him look you need to do this with conviction and they need to understand that that's the right thing they, they need to, 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 to hear. I think it's it's the first step to be uh, not succeed. Yeah. And you, you need to be prepared and you need to have knowledge about the game. And I was I, I was completely convinced that I was ready for that challenge. Unfortunately, uh, it was 
it wasn't so so long as we wish because the That's club it was in a transition moment. But uh, yeah, I I think that you have a lot of similarities with uh, working with age groups, younger age groups, and even in the first team. First yeah. is the knowledge you have about methodology and the knowledge about you have the game. I think it's it's key, it's decisive. Yeah. So the things that you learn, even with you 11s so think about this. So first, if you can explain something to an 11 year old, then you can explain it to a 15 year old and you can explain it to a 19 year old. And you can also explain it to, if you go to the steps, you can also explain something to a 30 year old. Doesn't matter if you have an argument with an 11 year old or a 15 year old or a 19 year old, you're also capable of handling uh, the argument with a 30 year old. Um, but if you start with an argument with a star player at a third year as a third year old, and that's your first argument, yeah, then it's interesting how you reply. So you need to build that, yeah, experience, like you're saying, um, and, uh, um, and and have these moments, especially if you want to go to the elite level, I think. But you felt that you had this, uh, and you felt that you had the baggage to to, to do it. Yes, and uh, give an example because that's about examples and. Uh, if, if, if you explain to a kid, 11 years old, that, okay, if, if in session, in e exercise, uh, you, if you do this, you will have success. First, <laughs> on, uh, on the exercise, and second, when you apply on the game, the kid will, uh, will trust on you blindly. Yeah. He, he, he will trust on you. Everything you say to him, he will understand because if you said if you if you create an exercise and you said if you do this this will happen the probably the it's probably the probability to happen this it's higher yeah uh, and if he experienced that and if he, he succeed and if he applies on the game and he succeed as well he will trust on you and you'll trust in your approach in your method in your philosophy the same as in a in a thirteen uh, in a thirty years old guy, uh, experienced player, uh, star player like I had in Monaco and in Benfica, if you said and if you train, if you create an exercise that okay, look, if we do this, this will happen, and if it happens, well, it's it. I think it's the click. You have them, you have them with you, but if you don't train uh, in the way. You want to, if you ask things that you don't train like that, like, okay, I'll give you an example. If you, you say to the, we need to train, we need to train with intensity, we need to play with intensity, high intensity, and need to train. But if the exercise will not allow them to play with intensity, because the conditions are not created for them to play with intensity, they will not believe in you. Yeah. So this kind of, this kind of detail, in my opinion, it's very important. Like, yeah. okay, uh, you say you say to a experienced player, thirty four years old, hey, we need to play with intensity, and we need to this combination. We need to to, to make this movement to happen something good for our team. But if you don't train that in that way, and if you, they will not trust in you, they will not they, they will not apply. Probably they can apply one time in a game, two times in a game, because yeah. they are experienced and they can only listen to do that. But I think what I want to say is uh, a coach is not only uh, the knowledge you have about the game and the argument you can have, uh, talk. I think you need to apply it in, in the training sessions, uh, in the game. Yeah. You need to you, train the way you play. And you need to connect your methodology with your ideas, with yeah. your philosophy and your approach on, on players. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Okay. Great. Yeah, this is a great story that how you connect the ages and the similarities. And it's, well, it's interesting to hear that even on the elite level, it's still the same. And that's, I hear it with a lot of coaches that I've spoken so far. We had the guy from, from Denmark. He also moved up when he was, I think, 27, 28. All of a sudden he found himself on the pitch with the first team. And what does it do with you? And he said exactly the same. If they see you're bringing something to the pitch that it improves them, age, whatever, experience, doesn't matter. Okay, experience makes you more convincing. That's for yourself. But for a player, they just see the guy and the energy and the things that he's bringing to the pitch. And if that fits 
the moment, if that fits the atmosphere, if that fits the performance culture, it doesn't matter uh, how much experience you have. It's you there presenting the knowledge, presenting the aspect, concept, whatever. Uh, then you're there. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, for me, it was also a learning point. You, you feel, okay, I'm this rookie, I'm this new guy. What do they think? It doesn't matter what they think. If you present yourself the way you want to, they're going to feed off of you. But that the other way, it's also the same way around. If you are there and you don't perform, yeah, in youth, they're going to maybe step back a little, but to the seniors, they kill you. So <laughs> yeah. that's, that's true as well. Yeah, that's. I think that's that, that that's it because they cannot look at you and uh, this guy is an, an experienced coach and they, it, it doesn't have anything to to head on on my on my performance and my career. The, the I think the right approach is okay. I'm a rookie. Uh, I'm, I'm a new guy because I had that experience when I was 28 years old. But you need to to impact them. You cannot say, you cannot argue that, hey, uh, my, in my experience, we need to do this or you need to do that. No, of course, it's not the right approach. I think the right approach is it's to impact them in other things, uh, in your energy, in the, your knowledge, uh, the way you want them to, 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 to play, uh, the right, I think, the, the right ideas. And to have the right ideas, you need to work a lot and you need yeah. to to go deep on knowledge on, on your players first. And you need to go deep on the game. You need to go deep on the analysis. Uh, if you have this kind of knowledge, I, I'm, I'm completely sure that you will have a major impact on players, even yeah. if you are an, an, an experienced coach. Yeah. Let's, let's touch upon your knowledge a little bit because uh, I think it's almost, no, oh, how do you say this? It is almost common that Portuguese coaches share knowledge. I have, I've talked to many, many of them. Uh, and it's so normal for you guys to be open. I, it's pretty normal for every coach, but sharing knowledge is pretty, pretty important for the, for, for the Portuguese coaches community. That's what I experience. Um, and why is that? Why is sharing knowledge so important? Within coach, now we, we were talking about players, but now it is more towards coaches. Yes, uh, I think that I think that, that that's that, that's that's true. We not, we like to to share knowledge. Um, if you share knowledge, uh, you are doing um, a discussion. You are creating a discussion because uh, if you share knowledge uh, in the other way, uh, in the opposite way, it will come a feedback. It will come something. It will come something with an input, yeah. like like an input. And if you share knowledge, you are learning as well, because um, in football, we know that football, even in life, there is nothing is concrete. Uh, you you can have your opinion and then and I can have mine, but I'm, I'm not sure if I'm right. I'm not sure if you are right. So if you share knowledge, I think uh, we will learn from each other and we will. I think we will be better yeah. as a coach mainly in football life as well but in football mainly because football it's very subjective uh, it's a very su subjective game so we need to to see different approaches we need to discuss ideas and uh, we like to share because we are not afraid to share in my opinion yeah. i'm not I, I like to share because i don't have any problems to share uh, ev everything my experiences my knowledges my documents my because i believe that first uh, if I can help others to reflect on the, in their practices, perfect, brilliant, because uh, if we have better coaches in the world, we will have better players in the world yeah. as well. I think that's, that's the key. In Portugal, in, in our system, it's, it, it's, a, it's a small system, but if we have better coaches here, that we believe that we will have better players. We will develop better players. So if if we hide our knowledge, if we hide our experiences, we, yeah, we, we I think we will not help each other, and we need to help each other. This is a micro society. Football, it's a micro society. Yeah, yeah. We know that, and we need to help our society. We need to help players to develop. We need to have develop coaches. And I think that that's that's my own approach in football. It's not only your approach. I I, I find it very common. Let's say we had. Uh, 
Paulo, we had Fernando, Pedro, now you and everybody's relaxed. No, there's no there's no limitations on what you what you're sharing. There's no limitations. Uh, well, for sporting, in this case, there was no limitations for the club. Uh, with Pedro, uh, everybody was okay. No, we're, we'll bring it out there, and um, yeah, that gives feedback that makes us stronger again. So, if I have to present my story, I have to really think it through, and I have to be my best when I share my story. And even if I get some criticism, it makes a story, or it makes the concept, or it makes the methodology much better. Um, I agree. Th I think it's something every coach should try. The best way of learning something is explaining it to somebody else, uh, which yeah. is the hardest way of learning, because then it gets tested. Yeah, it's. I uh, fully agree. I fully agree. I think that that's that, that that's that's very true. Uh, we need if we explain it, our our things, uh, the feedback that will come from the other side. I think that that's very important for us as well to to make this. Um, idea solid and i think that's that's true as well but um in my case uh, i like to to share as well because i believe that uh, first i will learn and and i i, I hope that creates some impact on on the other coaches because uh, that that's our society that's oh. our the way we, i see life it's like this sharing if you're not sharing you, you will keep for for you for what you i think I think you will keep for you for what, and I don't have any problems to share even my documents because even my sessions, even my exercises, uh, I, I can tell you, I create my exercises. Uh, I, we, our staff, we create our uh, uh, own exercises. We don't take exercises from other examples. Yeah. Of course, we have we have some references. But you have some we, inspiration, we, probably. Yeah, inspiration as well. But uh, we have our we create our own exercises because. Uh. We believe that the exercise is the, the main tool for to, for to train our idea. And we need to create our exercises, the conditions of our exercise. So if I want to share my exercises, I, I share. If someone asks me to give my exercise, I will give. Because probably uh, I will say to him, look, if you apply these exercises, probably the result will not be the same. Because it depends on a lot of factors. First. Yeah the team your team the characteristics of your team the profile uh, the way you see the game as well the game idea and the way you uh, lead the exercise the way you deliver the exercise so it depends a lot of factors you can have this exercise to have an idea but please don't copy just uh, reflect on and create your own this kind of sharing i believe it's very important for for, for us because uh all the coaches did the same with me when I was starting. Uh, I was very happy to, to to have this influence on me when I went to Barcelona, when I went to Manchester City, when I went to all all over the world, Borussia Dortmund as well. Uh, all the coaches they have a, the same approach on me. Uh, they they share and they create and yeah, it influenced myself as well as a coach. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. Sharing is caring. This is a very simple, simple sentence, but it's actually true in this case. Yeah. And, uh, what I like is uh, that you're going to share with us as well. It's going to be in a month. Um, which what is it, 17th of January? But uh, you're going to talk about a small part of your philosophy as well um, about attacking in the third phase. Yeah. Maybe you can give us a little, a little bit of an insight. What your ideas on this? Because. We spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, uh, and then I felt the passion through the phone. <laughs> this is the most interesting phase in attacking because it's where the creation part comes out. So yeah. maybe you can share a little bit with the listeners as well. Yeah, it's. I think it. It's. A, it's a. It's a good phase to to, to develop because um, it depends if you if you have uh, an approach like like me attacking dominating trying to control i think you will try to find always half spaces in the third phase and i, I divide the game in four phases uh, like i told you uh, yeah, yeah. yeah on the phone a couple years a couple of weeks ago and the first phase is the build-up second phase preparation third phase creation and the fourth phase finishing so i i, I divide the game in four phases 
attacking and defending, but attacking, it's the, it's the subject we will develop. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's very key for, for a team who likes to dominate. Try to find off spaces, try to find gaps in, in the third phase to create, because if you dominate, probably the opposition will play in a medium block or a low yeah. block. Yeah. And you need to find spaces there to create. You need to break the first and second line of pressure to find those spaces and to be able to break the last line. Uh, and for that, it's a very complex. I think it's a very complex and very yeah. hard to find those spaces. And I find it the hardest part in attacking. Yeah, it's, it's the end it's, phase four is yeah. relatively easy. It's pulling the trigger. That's so simplified, but okay, it's where you need to be. You have to have no mercy. You have to think fast. It's red, relatively short and easy for phase one. It's also, in my opinion, relatively easy. I'm not saying it is easy, but easier concept. And for phase three, phase two is also building up. Okay, you want to create an overload, but then yeah. when the lines become closer to each other. You have to find the balance, in my opinion, between breaking and discipline, but also giving freedom for creativity. It's it, and if you give too much creativity, you're out of balance. If there's too much balance, there's no creativity. Exactly, that, 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 that's the key because you need because that's why I will, I will talk about principles. Uh, you cannot you cannot cut creativity because creativity in in the, this phase is 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 absolutely crucial, but even you need to be, like you said, uh, you need to be disciplined and you need to, to follow some, some principles to, to achieve that, those, those gaps and to achieve this situation to, to be able to create situation for, for, for finishing. And I believe that this phase, it's a very important phase on, on my, my, my game, every game, but in the way I see game, that try to find spaces outside, inside, try to, uh, make them, uh, make players and develop players to to turn and to be able to create quickly in the right timing and after that it's connected with the finishing phase because finishing phase like you said it's it's a little bit more easy because it, it depends on players they need to finish they need to be um, they need to be very sharp to, to, to score but uh, even when you turn in the third phase and you are able to create you need to to make your team to make movements and to need to understand the right movements to to follow the creation phase because if you create and if you turn and if you find gaps and you turn and you are in front of the last line but there are no movements probably this phase will be useless there. yeah because you need to, to to do that and the the thing that uh, makes me happy as well in this phase, and I like a lot of third phase, I focused a lot on third phase, it's the way you create balance on your team. Because when you find those gaps, when you find those off, off spaces, you have, of course, the, um, the perfect scenario is you create, yeah. and you put the pass, and you the pass, and they finish. But sometimes you achieve these spaces, and the player receive the ball on those spaces, but you lose the ball, and you need to be prepared to press again and to have the ball again. Yeah. It's not only attacking, you need to be balanced as well. Maybe to so ready, think, ready for the counter attack, you have to, that's where you find the balance. Yes, because if you only focus on creation and then finishing, if you don't focus on the balance and to compact your lines, because if you lose the ball, you need to press again or you need to yeah. be able to avoid counter attacks. Uh, you will be in trouble. So I think this is a very rich phase, and I, I hope we can develop uh, good discussions here. In well, I am really looking general. forward to it. Yeah, yeah, because I see one thing changing you. Because you were a little bit relaxed. You were talking about your your about your career and the stories, and now you are in front of your seat. You're almost into the screen. You're really <laughs> talking about this. So this is something yeah. that is that is bringing out some energy with you as well. Yeah, I love I love these kind of discussions. We can be here for for all day. Yeah, we'll we'll do that for sure. We'll do that for sure, and we'll go hopefully with a big audience that will all be joining us. But uh, yeah, I I saw the coach coming out of you there. So going forward, you already. <laughs> yeah, thank okay, you. Not, 
So if you are listening to this and you want to know more about the subject, uh, we'll find the way to get the link to you or just find find our channels and, and find the link to the webinar. Small promotion here. I've never done this before, actually, but I'm doing it now. <coughs> Thank you for I'm happy to know that. Yeah, no, it's going to be a good session. And again, I like the, um, so we're talking about the subject, but I like also the openness about you and that that you are willing to to well willing to test your philosophy for a bigger crowd uh and willing to help other coaches uh, have a run with it and don't copy just take the things that you want to take from it put it in your own philosophy or put it in your own ideas and just go from there i think that's that's the that's a good subject not a good good way to to learn and to approach and to test until you find your own style it's kind of how we begun yeah, you said you were lucky that you created your own methodology. I don't think it's luck. It's something that you do. It's something that you do every day because not every 20-year-old takes the time to, to put a pen and paper and start writing on your own methodology. It's not luck. The same way if you dis decide 10 games in a row in the 92-second minute, it's not luck. It's yeah. the way you approach it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, yeah, I think... You say you're uh, lucky, way, but you're not lucky. You just worked hard for it. Yes, I, I did, uh, and I, I keep I keep working hard, and I keep working hard. Sometimes, yeah, uh, when of um, I can tell you this, no problem. When I when I when I won the um, uh, award of best coach, youth coach of the year by the Portuguese Federation. Yeah, I saw you lifting uh, the trophy on online. Uh, yeah, I won. It was it was very rewarding for me. It it, it meant a lot. Um, the, I, I met Jose Mourinho in the backstage, and he said he, he, he won a trophy as well, a very important trophy in Portugal as well. Uh, in that in that event, and he said to me, "Good luck uh, for your career. Uh, sometimes you need luck." Uh, yeah. we, 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 of course, I believe much more than luck that you need you need to work hard and you need to wait for your opportunity to to I think to be succeed and to achieve your 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 objectives and your dreams as a coach. But you need to work hard. You you need to trust on on your process. You need to trust on your on the way you you worked. And I, I think I'm a good example of that because I worked hard uh, and I keep working hard and I will keep working hard because, like you said, uh, you cannot trust in in things like uh, luck. You you will you need to trust in your work in your. You know what ideas. they say when uh, luck is when uh, preparation and, and hard work meets opportunity. That's that, when that's you say that you're lucky, but it. it's never luck. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay, there I are some situations that it's lucky ball inside of the of the post or whatever, but in this case, yeah. it's different. Yeah, I try to find. Uh, I think that that that's the key because I work to 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 have succeed, and 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 and, and, I, and I know that I need to work, uh, keep working hard to 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 be succeed. I think yeah. that's the the most uh, expiring thing that that I can tell for all the coaches: work hard, do not wait. Yeah, great. Does working hard also includes reading? A lot, yeah. Reading a lot, research. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of guy I prefer to discuss than read. Uh, of course, I read and I make my research, uh, but I we have a, a small group of coaches, uh, my friends, my staff, my friends. We have a small group. We are always discussing. We are always yeah. connecting. We are always watching games, and we are always discussing about methodology and everything around football. Uh, I think that's that's more important for me. Because I'm, 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 a, I'm more. How I say this? I, I like to socialize more. I'm yeah. A, I like to, to be close to my friend and. Let's not forget that you have some kids as well, which make makes reading impossible. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes I have time to read. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but I, I, I like to read it as well. I like, and I, I, I try to find time to read. And I read some books that made some impact on me uh, in my, in my process. Uh, yeah. You know uh, that like, we're going there, so show them, or maybe you can tell them. Uh, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, I, I, I like. Uh, sorry, you, you ask. Yeah, yeah. What? So which ones? Uh, books. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not. I think 
I, I, I could tell you a lot of books here, and I have some Dutch books as well. Okay, uh, cool. I, I read uh, Verayen. Uh, I read some books from Verayen. Uh, oh yeah, of course. But it was yeah, it, it, it very good books. Uh, I loved to read it. Um, but one of the book, one of the books, made more impact on me was the Alex Ferguson book, Leading. Okay. Okay. It's a, it's a very important book, I think, because we are talking about technical things and methodology, uh, game model idea, blah, blah, blah. But leading, it's, it's, it's absolutely key. Yeah. The way you communicate. We, we, we talked a lot of leading in, in this conversation. Yeah. Uh, when we said that the, the, the sign the, the signals you give to players, the indicator you give to players, it, uh, and I think that th this, this area of coaching it's very important leading and this book i completely advise probably the most part of the coaches already read, read it but if not please buy it and read it because it's a, a absolutely important book to read a lot of experiences a lot yeah, of sure. knowledge and it's it's absolutely it's one of the ultimate examples or of how to be a leader and also i yeah. think i haven't read the book to be fair but also one of the, the people that shows us that because he started coaching in the 80s and he was still a top coach in the 2000 whatever's uh, that he found a way to adjust himself and and constantly improve himself to be the leader for what, maybe the biggest club in the world yes yes yes, yes, yes. yeah it was it is a absolutely key book and he said we're not one of the the sentences uh, i i memorize more was um, everything we do on the game we already practice on the yeah. on, on yeah. training session so i think that's th that means a lot about your philosophy yeah. you cannot ask because um, i identify myself with, with this kind of approach because i think that you cannot ask players to do something on the game if you don't practice on the session it's impossible. It, no, of course, it's possible, but could happen one time or two times. But to ask your players to be solid doing something on the game, you need to train on the session. You need to experience on the session. You need to yeah. um, make them to have those experiences. And if not, you cannot ask for them to play. Or like uh, we have a very, you have a lot of examples. Like coaches, they want their team, they, they in, in the other hand, in sessions, they do possession exercises, attacking exercises, finishing yeah. exercises, and when they go to the match, they will ask the team to play in counter. Yeah. So it's not the same. Uh, I think that's the most, the most important advice for coaches. If you want to play under a certain idea, you need to train and you need to experience on the sessions. And this sentence on this book, I think that that it was that an eye opener me. for you. Yeah, of course. Well, eye opener. It made it more. Clear. I, I, I identify myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Okay, it's going to be on the book list. I should publish that list because the list is getting longer and longer. Every as <laughs> we're getting one, two, three, four books. We'll yeah, but publish them. Aaron. So. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we, we we talk about football and we only focus on football and we only focus on football knowledge. Uh, I believe that we need we, to understand football. We need to understand all ev everything around football, society, and culture. And some sometimes there are some books and some knowledge. Sometimes no, every time there are some knowledge of the of football could be very important for coaches. And I can I can tell you uh, I can give you another book for you to have, not uh, is not directly connected with football, yeah. but it, it will help you a lot. It's the power of habit. Yeah, uh, Charles Dewey. Well, oh, this is this is a coincidence because no, it's not a coincidence. We with the team of football webinars are reading that book now, all of us. Yeah, because, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, I gave it to Great. to the staff of of uh, football webinars. Okay, this is a book we should learn. And actually, the guys are reading it. I have, and they're going to present the results to me. So I have to be fair. I'm not reading it, but okay. it's interesting uh, that you say this. But go on, just give give a, a little bit of a spoiler alert. Alert. <laughs> no, I will not spoil your your stuff, <laughs> uh, your stuff uh, inputs. 
but it's a very i think it's a very important book because it will help you to to find some some guidelines to to be to be to be truthful for 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 for, for the way you coach i think that's i think that that's the right that's the right thing you, you, you will give you some guidelines to to help you to to be more organized and to be more uh, focused on the right things um, and more important thing to be more relaxed and more yeah. calm because if you are organized and you are if you have structure and if you put uh, things the right things in the right places uh, you will have more time and you will be more available and you will you will have more time to reflect and to be off sometimes you don't have time to be off and to to, to reflect and to think for ourselves. And I think that's very important. But for that, you need to organize yourself. Your Structure time. means freedom in this case. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, final question, Joao. Who are, going, who are we, who should we invite next? Uh, I have a lot of Maybe names. Your brother, that's the first one. <laughs> My brother, I think it will be very <laughs> rich as well. <laughs> uh, it, it will be very good, but I will go, go out of the box. Okay. Uh, and I will advise you a guy who works in, in Liverpool. Okay. I have actually two, but if I if I said to you a Dutch guy, probably you will said to me uh, again. I know exactly who you mean. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I will I will advise you Vitor Match. He's working with Pepin Linders and Jurgen Klopp in okay. Liverpool. Uh, I, I, I'm a big friend of Pepin Linders. He's, he's absolutely... Of course, he worked at Benfica for the people that, that don't know it. In the same area, uh, time that you worked there, I think. Yes, and we took the same the same licenses in, okay. in Wales, the UEFA license and UEFA Pro license. Uh, I, it's, it's, a, it's a big friend of mine. I like him a lot uh, and I admire him a lot. In terms of coaching, it's, it's very, it, it's excellent. It's it's, it's, a, it's a different level. And next level, yeah, yeah. And but of course, you know, you know him, and everyone knows him. But I, I will advise you a Portuguese guy who works great. with him, oh, great. So, Vitor Matos. Yeah, Vitor Matos. Vitor Matos. Matos. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I can text you. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's. I think it's. It will help you a lot if if you can. Um, have a conversation with him. I think it will be very rich as well. He's a top coach, very great, good great. coach. Great. And, uh, you will love him. Okay, great. We'll put him on the list. And, uh, if he hears this already, there's some pressure on his shoulders. No, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. uh, we will find a way to to get him inside the coach's room. Okay, great. Yeah, Joao, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was really, really good conversation. Yeah, yeah I, I yeah. love this. Uh, we already uh, had several on the phone, but we just keep continue it, and now we put the camera on it. That's kind of what happened. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy to be here, and I, I, I hope that ev everyone who is listening um, could reflect something on their practices. I hope you enjoyed as well, and because I enjoy, I enjoyed a lot, and I'm very happy to talk about football with you. Great, great. Well, it was completely uh, the same for me. I already enjoyed the talks that we had so far and uh, this is completely the same and now we maybe even went a little bit deeper and, um I, I, it's interesting how your journey that went so far from every age to working at the elite level of europe at benfica already and, uh, and at monaco and uh, this journey is not over and um yeah I'm, I'm wishing you all the best for your next move i hope it comes soon but i hope it comes after january 17th I have to be fair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let, let, let's see. In football, oh, you, cannot you never know. In football, you never know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you too. Much. And uh, we speak soon. Bye, Joao.